Hello and welcome to Real Vision, the Defiance weekly show, chowing down the juiciest morsels of crypto, DeFi, and metaverse news. I'm Robin Schmidt, and joining me once again from Real Vision, Elaine Lee and the Defiance Committee Rusa. And if you are missing a tortuously constructed opening line here, it's mainly because I spent yesterday in the sobering company of a Ukrainian film producer whose work is to funnel urgently needed supplies from wherever they are, whether it's Mexico and the US, to people on the front line in the Ukraine. And somehow I'm just feeling a little less zappy today. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be a downer, but like this, my brain has been rearranged and reorganized and given a different view on everything. There, 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 there are certain kind of reality checks that happen when you talk to people who have been in the Ukraine, have escaped the Ukraine, and are now trying to help those who are just confronted with just the most awful realities over there. So yes, I, I think, yeah, maybe we can do something with DeFi and crypto. But that is not the topic for today. It's just an excuse not to, to be too flippant, I guess. So Elaine, welcome. Camilla, welcome. I would, like to put it to you, I would like to put it to you that there have been stories on our radars. And I'm curious, Camilla, which has been most front of mind for you this week? Well, I mean, this, this story about Facebook slash Meta um, and their, their latest um, antics in the metaverse is has just blown my mind. Um, this came in uh, yesterday, and um, basically, it's uh, Facebook's scheme to uh, take a profit from sales in its uh, metaverse game, um, and it's it's just so the opposite of what this uh, this new Web three ecosystem is supposed to be. So. Um, Summarizing uh, what's going on here is that uh, Facebook will be taking or wants to take um, a cut of almost 50% uh, from sales that happen um, in its metaverse game uh, Horizon World. So the fifth, like that figure comes from 30% um, is a cut that the like headset, like the uh, Quest VR headsets take, and then. On top of that, Facebook takes like 25 part point something percent. Um, and so, you know, it's like on the one hand, uh, you have this kind of um, blockchain powered uh, metaverse where it's non custodial, people are uh, in control, you're able to uh, fork code if you don't you know, if you disagree with the fee that people are, are taking. Um, and oftentimes people have direct ownership of these protocols via tokens. So it's, it's a much more empowering system. And then comes Facebook, changes its name to Meta, forces itself into this narrative. Um, and on top of all that, wants to take a 50% cut of sales uh, from something that's kind of supposed to be empowering creators. Uh, Facebook just wants to take a big kind of profit cut uh, out of it. So it's uh, just like not, not surprising, but still like still kind of pretty, pretty mind blowing. Uh, yeah, to be fair, it, it, it was a proposal. They weren't actually saying this is what we're going to do. And in the blog post, they say okay. that they're testing a way for creators to sell virtual items and experiences within their worlds. But I would say that that almost makes it worse. That almost makes it worse. Like you start from, well, we'd like to do this, but we're going to do this. The thing about the Oculus Quest is it's a, it's a very odd way of them trying to compete on a hardware basis with Apple. That's basically what the play was here. Create a hardware platform that they could then leverage to do things with and that's what they want to do here i don't know if you ever used an oculus quest they are pretty amazing but it's kind of limiting because every vr experience is, is limiting but the games on there are highly limited there's a very limited selection and those who are on there are paying this 30 percent premium and so what they're looking at here is not, not only is horizon worlds going to have a very very small number of creators actually selling uh on, at the, in the opening phase but they're also going to get a fairly hard, heavy chunk of money to incentivize them to actually develop there. So th there is a bit of give and take and the headlines are a little bit misleading, but at the same time, you just read this as you go, no. Yeah, oh, and that's no. the other thing. That's the other thing. They are limiting 
the like who can actually use this like who can actually sell this and i think it was like you need to be like 18 and based in or 18 or older and based in the us and canada so like that's the other piece that's like completely against what web3 is supposed to be you know open and inclusive for everyone um facebook is taking a cut and limiting who can participate so it's just no no stop it elaine do you have a hot take on this one Ooh, so I just watched this whole story unfold and it really is hard to watch, isn't it? Obviously, crypto Twitter goes into meltdown. It sort of opens the conversation for, you know, the fight for an open metaverse continues. Um, I really have to direct you to an interview that Rao did. Um, and he has this whole conversation with Punk6529, which is over two and a half hours or two over two hours long. And you just got to watch it and make your own notes. You know, you go to Punk's Twitter account, and this is what he has pinned. They have the money and power. You have your brains and your community. You know, we are living in a time where we find ourselves in a position to to finally have this decentralized blockchain technology to rewrite a page in history so content creators can really make their own decisions. So ownership is important. You know, your data, your culture, your content is is finally worth something. So what is the true value of of your worth is worth in 2022 is it giving up almost 50 percent of it is that the way to go so many questions and you're right robin when you're saying you know this is a push for the, the new oculus project i have an oculus and i love playing the games on there but i do think having a marketplace for open metaverse is, is healthy having competition is healthy so this is one for us to to watch and i hope it just falls on you know the right side of history, so to speak, and just really look after content makers because, you know, making something from scratch, original idea is not as easy as you and I both know. There, there are so many pieces to this, but you just feel the weight of everything that Facebook has done and Meta now, as it's called, has always done. And the difficulty they have in in sitting down together as a group and coming up with something that doesn't involve just repeating the same models that have worked for them up until now. And it must be really hard for them to, mm. to shape a reality around something where it's free and it's open and they have no control. And I, I have a feeling that they won't succeed. It just feels to me like, like the younger generation are too smart and yeah. instinctively reject for, like Zuckerberg. He's just become the face of something. And until he's gone and they've kind of, I guess, cleaned up their act a little bit and cleaned up the optics, it's just going to be the same, same story. And, you know, I'm, I know I bring this up every week, but I'm watching my kids and I'm watching how they interact on Roblox. They love mm. Roblox. They love it so much. And I'm like, I'm watching my daughter do a, a digital fashion show and work her way through a game but also say, well, I need to do this, and then I need to acquire this, and I go, you're already doing it. She's 10 years old. She's got this. She's got this, and she, she won't care about meta. And I'm trying to, to sort of teach her that the open metaverse is we, we want to kind of push it forward is a thing. But when you say the fight for the open metaverse, I don't think it's for the open metaverse. The open metaverse is inevitable because there's too many people working on this. It's what does open mean? The fight for the concept of open. Um, that's the thing that I think is really interesting. And also, I think we can talk about the fight for an open audience. Because I think more than anything else, like when you when you look at the way Russia has managed to close off access to any kind of independent media, then you're really thinking about the audience here. So what is the audience receiving and how how open are they to to new ideas? I think it's a fascinating debate in front of us. And it's great that we have Meta attempting to do this because the more visible it is, the more abhorrent it is the more people will be motivated to push in the other direction. And that can only be a, a net positive for me anyway. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I think I think that this can be a net positive for the like the crypto version of, of the metaverse, like the non-custodial version of the metaverse. It, you know, it, it's just like reduces the competition from Web 2. Um, so I guess like to like an, another point to make here is that we don't 
we don't need Facebook to watch out for to take care of of creators. You know, I think there there are enough alternatives uh, outside of Web two, uh, being creative natively in Web three, uh, uh, which you know do empower empower um, creators. So yeah, it, it's like whatever. Like Facebook can do what it wants, but in the end, like the real metaverse is already being uh, created outside of it. Well, the, the metaverse story in Web2 are, are going to have to kind of duke it out. And what I'm finding fascinating at the moment is the way our next story ties all this together, because we have the announcement by Coinbase that they're going to be producing, they call it a movie trilogy. It's going to be three animated films, and a film can be two seconds long. It doesn't have to be 90 minutes, and I don't think it's going to be 90 minutes, but they are producing a film with some bored apes, a supposedly quote community owned or community directed uh, story this is coinbase it's board apes this is this is like the perfect intersection of web 2 and web 3 and i'm really curious what you make of this one camilla um okay so i think um a few things to to highlight here like one is just the absolute kind of like moon moon uh, heading rocket that Bored Apes is on. Uh, like, it, it's just been on a tear, like one thing after the other. Um, you know, they they acquired uh, CryptoPunks, they launched ApeCoin, um, and now this announcement uh, that that uh, Coinbase is going to be producing a, a, a trilogy called um, the DGEN Trilogy. Uh, based on the Bored Apes um, IP. So it's just like this is really becoming a such a major player in Web3 and, and NFTs. I mean, I think it's really kind of um, a, a project, a company to be reckoned with um, at this point. So who, who, are you, who are you talking about, though? Are you talking about Coinbase or are you talking about Yuga Labs? Because Yuga Labs has nothing oh, no, to do Yuga with the film. Labs. But they have nothing to do with the film. So oh, they... they are, well, I guess like board apes as like you know a symbol, you know, like that, like they that, become the. That's the confusion, yeah. right? Because uh, people will yeah. associate this with Yuga Labs. It's nothing to do with Yuga Labs. It's, it's just like Coinbase taking the like board apes IP and and running with it. It's a partnership, yeah. and it's a it's a marketing yeah. campaign to use the board apes to drive traffic towards the Coinbase wallet, and that's very smart, you know. Yeah. You, but like it, it's just well, there are so many things that that pop up for me. It's like the the. They're asking people to write the character profile of their ape, submit it, and then that ape will then be used or could be used or voted on to be a character in the film. So that whole process has to happen. Then they say they're going to launch the first film for NFT NYC, which is in June. And I'm like counting back now for an How are you going to make it? How are you going to make it in, in time? June? It, what? It's, going, it's going to be shit. I, yeah. I'm, not, I, I, I'm not. I'm not being funny there's here. There's a trilogy but like to, of it. But like to make to make a decent <laughs> film is hard. To make a decent animated film is really hard. You have to get script. You have to get voice talent. All of this stuff that takes time. That's development. They do not have enough time to make a good film. They'll make a shit film. It might look great, but it's going <laughs> to be shit. And I'm gonna. I'll happily watch it with you guys in June when it launches, and we'll all have to sign up for a Coinbase wallet. And uh, and there you go. <laughs> I think it's pretty well, clear. They, they, I think it's pretty. They, they, we could they do a live say, viewing party. They they didn't say um, how long each clip will be. Like it's a trilogy, but maybe it's like one minute each. So it's like okay, like a three minute trilogy. <laughs> I don't know. Bear in mind that the shorter something gets, the harder it is for it to be good. Like making a TV That's commercial, true. which is like thirty editing, seconds, it is extremely yeah, yeah. difficult. It's extremely yeah. difficult. No, it's going to be shit. And it's going wait, to be shit. So who is behind the production? All of this is it Coinbase with their people? Ah, good question. Like, does, Good question. Like, does well, Coinbase even have a film department? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. This is this is wild. So just going back to one of your things that you said, Cami, you, you missed out one of the biggest catalysts in the Board Ape story, which is the $450 million raise. True. That's just, true, true, true. This is like, it's, it's like nearly half a billion dollars for them to go build shit. Like the and, other and side valuation of that metaverse. was like $8 billion or what was it? Yeah. Something. Somewhere up there. Yeah. Somewhere move up quick, there. Move quick. There. So anyway, yeah. so so yes, so William Swan is the man that matters here. He is the director of entertainment and culture at Coinbase, which is a very strange, okay. strange term. Entertainment and culture, 
Okay, fine. He was the executive vice president and head of entertainment at BBH USA. And the thing about BBH is they specialized in the intersection of advertising technology and entertainment. So he was the perfect guy to hire. To Basically, what they do is they monetize IP. So Coinbase okay. have hired this dude to figure out how to turn Web3 IP into something that will generate revenue for Coinbase and also drive new subscribers, new traffic, new paying customers to the platform. Um, let's bear in mind that every time you trade crypto, you pay Coinbase if you use them. And they, their fees are <gasps> ah, insane, <laughs> insane. So this is, this is the human that is behind all this. They actually have a media arm for the film's production. It's led by this guy. He doesn't have a film background, so I don't know what he knows about film. But the quote was, you can think of this as a love letter to the NFT tech that has provided so much creative liberation for artists. Already, like, I'm just like, oh. Hmm. Love letter is what they describe things that Scorsese makes about, you know, his love for Catholicism. That's, you know, I love, it's, 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 it's indulgent and it's, it's horrifying and it has no place in this environment. Like, if they just said, listen, we're going to make a live action version of Board Apes and we're going to hire The Rock to be in it, you'd be like, fuck yes. But this... <laughs> Animated, it's just, sorry, I'll say it again. It's going to be shit. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I still yeah. think, you know, th this this is like, just like bolstering the, the whole like board apes. And even if it's not like direct, like if Yuga Labs isn't behind it, it's like raising the board apes profile even, even higher. You know, it's, it's just like, it's crazy how much this project has achieved in, in so little time. And it, it, you know, it may as well be shit, but you know, I think it's just like it's um it's a first step in something in in, in creating um creating content based off uh, NFT and and I think like something else to to highlight is that you know the fact that Coinbase can take this Board Apes IP and do something with it is why uh, Board Apes were you know it's part of the reason why Board Apes were successful to begin with like the fact that they um, gave up uh, IP to NFT holders instead of uh, retaining it themselves. Like that was kind of the the crucial like difference um, with CryptoPunks. So it's like now Coinbase is putting this to work in in a big way. So um, I think it's exciting, but you're right. Like it remains to be seen whether the the actual like film is any good. <laughs> so the the signal to me that this would have been good is if right up front they they would have announced the writer. But they haven't. Mm -hmm. So that's it for me. I mean, even even a director would have come secondary, but like announcing a writer would have shown me that they understand what, what a film is. But I like, mean, I, I know seem... it's talking about apes, but do we know anything about the narrative of the story? Like, is it about like, ooh, they sold out in seconds? But and Elaine, now journey... but Elaine, we're gonna let the community write this. They're gonna they're gonna uh, give us the uh. best of their heart and their sentiment of their emotion. In other words, we won't do any of the work. We'll let you do the work, and then okay. we'll just say, "Yeah, but it's community driven, so it doesn't matter if it's crap." Robin, let's oh. try and, and see how how that works. Just like letting our community write our our stories and videos. <laughs> I think you know. I think you know how that will go. Yeah. I think you know. We shall it's, see. It's all about the sustained ecstasy of seven videos a week. That's that's what it's about. Mm. Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah. When people step into the, the the land that I know well, then I then I I feel empowered. <laughs> to be more vocal in my distaste. But that's but that's a beautiful thing. Um, the, the metaverse is also obviously a key part of the Bored Apes journey and experience. And it, the Bored Ape metaverse itself is due to launch in April. I don't know whether that's going to have been pushed back or delayed by anything that's going on in the world. But um, it's certainly something that will drive the price of ApeCoin, no doubt. Uh, we know that ApeCoin is like just integral to everything in the Ape ecosystem and with 450 million dollars you can be sure they're going to be delivering a lot of stuff this year powered by that ape coin so who knows could be a good trade could be a good trade but anyway that's that's the icky side of things elaine really wanted to talk about aku <gasps> oh so what a exciting project coming up in the space i mean huge fan of michael johnson obviously um just because his dedication of just building this whole thing together. I think um, there are seven chapters that he released and basically those chapter holders. Um, ten. ten. Oh, okay. Um, and if you collect all 10 chapters, I think you're, you're qualified as a moon god or a moon goddess. <laughs> and if you hold one of these chapters for whenever it launched, 
you're actually uh, been rewarded with like a, a an Akuta Mint Pass, and that Akuta Mint Pass will give you also um, uh, an NFT of the brand new Akuta that uh, Micah is releasing. And I think the Akuta collection, I can't remember how many there is, but that I think they're they're going to drop on the 22nd of April. I mean, right now you can buy a mint pass to get one of these, but it's already over one ETH. And just watching some of the, the promo video talking about the content um, and this collection is so breathtaking. It's so nice to see like schools, you know, painting a coup on murals, kids learning about, you know, organically learning about Web3 now. And I think that is just something that this project is the part of watching this project this journey grow of this project is, is so wholesome. It's something so nice to see because you're actually seeing the how, you know, a brand new project is is genetically built on Web3. That's something really nice to watch. And I just see like Michael Johnson this week uploading a video of himself becoming a YouTuber going, this is how you do the wallet. And it's just when you see the passion and and the dedication of the founder behind the project giving so much where he has to all of a sudden become a YouTuber as well, just to safely onboard people onto his project. It's something genuine and authentic about this, that I, it feels, feels good. The, the ethics and the morale of it feels good. <laughs> Have you seen Micah? He's like Superman. He's got like this, he's an incredibly handsome man. He's a former so handsome. baseball superstar <laughs> player. He's like, and he's got this he's got this incredibly softly spoken way of expressing himself, but he's also yeah. a great artist. I mean it's Where's like, your Aku? Don't you have a model figure? Yeah, I just showed it. There he is. There oh, is. sorry. Um, <laughs> I was busy babbling on. Yeah. So so this yeah, this this came about because Micah basically heard a, a young boy basically ask his nephew if, if astronauts could be black, which is a really mm. profound statement because he just yeah. didn't see anybody that was. So that the became yeah, the first time I actually met Michael Johnson was through a Real Vision interview with him as well. And the first thing I said, Micah, I totally get your project. You know, my mom told me that I couldn't be ever classed as Lady Macbeth when I was doing drama in school. So he was just like, this is exactly, you know, why culture is everything when you can relate to something. And, and yeah, so there it is. I think that's just the perfect example of what you should should see. Every project that can be built has to be diverse, has to be culture, has to be, you know, relatable to everyday people. Well, there's there is a there's a whole streetwear and fashion collaboration going on that they announced yesterday. He's mm. collaborating with Billionaire Boys Club with ice cream, this is skateboard apparel, Puma, footwear, upscale vandal, and who decides war. And if you see the quality of the assets that they put out, uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> like artifacts partner like nike bought artifacts and artifact was putting out work that was pretty much as as detailed and as high quality as you can see i think the accutars are on on a par with it it's it's really impressive uh there will be an accuverse there'll be a whole metaverse with some gamification some web3 stuff they're, they're just doing things there in, in their own way and it's all you know it's all geared around micah's personality and his expression of his own journey in this and it, it just yeah i love it i'm a big fan come are you are you aware of the um the michael johnson story no no i wasn't um i'll definitely have to look into it after this i yeah no i hadn't looked Wait, into for, it. for selfish motives now can i just ask what do i need to do to get into this whole ecosystem do i need to get a mint pass should i get a chapter like how does one begin their journey with this akuta project now what any suggestions anyone well well, you're right. The, the the ten chapters that made up um, the Aku story, they were on Nifty Gateway, and then many of them were airdropped to holders of those chapters. There were ten of them, and getting a complete set of ten is is quite expensive. Um, Very, we're talking yeah. like you know luxury sports car level expensive. That create that makes you a moon god, and if you're a moon god, you get one of the mega OG uh, avatars, Akutars. But like you, you know, the the Akutas is fifteen thousand of them, and you'll be able to buy them on secondary markets. But I think there's also like, yeah, you don't have to buy one to be part of that experience. Just go and join the Discord, and I'm sure Michael will be trying to do as much as he can to make it not massively expensive. Because as you rightly say, like the the Akutas themselves, are like one and a half ETH, that's what like five grand. That's that's out of the range of 
He's like, actively uh, in there as well. I yeah. pop into the Discord just because I like the project. So, is Akita like part of this, um, like, I don't know, cartoon series? I, like, I'm just like so lost here. I don't know what this is. You have a character. <laughs> he has IP. Okay. Uh, okay. And, and that's actually, Akita? That, that's, that's Aku. And the Aku. Akutas okay. themselves are just variations on this with different apparel. And these streetwear brands have contributed uh, traits, but there's also one of ones where they have the complete outfit, and they're gorgeous. I mean, they're really uh, they is represent. It, is it ACU. It's AKU. AKU. Okay. AKU. Yeah. And um, yeah, this <laughs> is. Just... I'm, I'm, I'm I'm like searching it. She's, I'm looking she, at it right she's now. aping. She's aping live. <laughs> go, 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 go. But I don't I don't, don't want to oversell this because like it, it it's there there's always this. Difficult you know, thing where it's just like, what's the entry know, point? How do you get in? But like, I just think the project itself is just, and I've been talking about it for months already. Like it's, I know, it's, I know, I know, cool. I know, I know. It, it, but it, the thing is, it's, you know, even a couple of months, it was so early. I can't promise you this, but I'm going to pitch for Micah to try and come on this show. I keep reaching out to him. I've reached out to him on, on Discord and Twitter. And like, we, we, I've been trying to try get him for, for, for months. I'm going to try it for you. I'm going to try it. All right. For you. Okay. All right. It's happening. You. Because I think, because yeah. one of the things that okay. I know Mike is doing is is also a film, because you know mm -hmm. the character itself is is really kind of narrative driven. They've also done animations for these chapters that that give you a sense of the boy's story, and so and I know they also bought the same suits that we have to do motion capture. So that he's thinking along the same lines as we are, which is how do we create an in-house studio where we can cinematically express ourselves through this IP that we have created. But I think what's very clear from this. The session that we're having to hear is that storytelling and narrative are going to be the primary drivers of token value accrual in the next five mm. years. It's pretty obvious already, an IP-driven, entertainment-driven value. And that's kind of where I sit, and I, I feel so conflicted about the whole thing. I would like to give everything away for free, honestly, and, uh, and let it just be out there. But that's just not the way the world works, unfortunately. So there you go. Um, any other stories on your radar? You too. Um, mine is watching that pop-up restaurant. Ah, oh, sorry, it's a bit too. It's another ape story. Do you guys want this? No. <laughs> um, I mean, we can. Yeah, I mean, it, it's part of the whole like taking advantage, exploiting, leveraging IP, right? And yeah, there's like yeah. this board ape restaurant. But like, okay. similar yeah. to what Robin was saying about the film, like the at least like the, totally. the photos of the food look really bad. Like those hamburgers do not look <laughs> appetizing at all. But yeah, we can <laughs> look totally just better. Yeah. Just very quickly, it's not. It's, the pop up is set up for ninety days. The restaurant is in Long Beach, California. It's called Bored and Hungry, and that's like the story of everyone's lives, right? When <laughs> it talks about people's diets, and then, um, you know, look, if McDonald's can team up with BTS, why not the Bored Apes and Fries? That's it. No more. Yep, Move yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> um, another NFT story um, is this NFT refund. A story that we oh, that's a good one. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Super interesting. There's this new uh, standard ERC 721R for refund, I guess, um, which, if used, uh, will allow NFT buyers to to get refunds within um, a set uh, time frame. So you know, like I think the like the thinking behind this is. There have been like so many scams on rug pulls, like projects just like running off um, with the money, not following up on any of the roadmaps. Uh, so this gives uh, buyers like some sort of safety net um, and those handles incentivizes the project to stick around at least for the period of, uh, of when the refund is live. Um, but then there's like issues with it, like People can game it and just like mint the entire collection and and keep the rare, the most rare tokens and then give everything back. So yeah, like maybe there are still kind of things like tweaks to be done, but I think it, it it's definitely a step in the right direction. Well, what I like about this is that the refund mechanism is hard coded into the, the token itself, mm -hmm. so it doesn't rely on humans to administer it. And I think that's the the interesting bit. It's it's the yeah. it's the money robot just does its job, and once that has been implemented and you signed up for that, then it just it just works. I, I'm curious how they figure out the time because it, is it is it measuring blocks or something until 
the timer runs down. I don't know. Because you can't, like, time on blockchains is a bit weird. Yeah. You can't just say, like, it's 14 days. Is, that doesn't really work. You have to say not how many blocks. But that's kind mm -hmm. of interesting. Um, and you're right, it can be gamed. But I think this is the, the, the an interesting kind of, um, what's the right word? Whitewashing of your project. It's and, and like any, any rug pool could still do this and then just buy the tokens themselves. I also, as you said, there's been so many rug pools. There really haven't, you know. Mm. Much, much more problematic in the space is just inept teams with idiotic founders who have no sense of business starting projects and then <laughs> being completely unqualified to to move them beyond the first sale phase. That's and it's literally just as a bunch of startup idiots. I mean, there definitely <laughs> have been projects where like the founders just like disappear and like the like sure. leave the Discord. They like the Twitter is gone and like. People are just like left with like these tokens and but, but as, no a, as, a, as an overall percentage of how many projects there actually are, it's pretty yeah, low. I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I yeah, I don't know like what the percentage is, but there's definitely been a few of those. But it, yeah, but the, the biggest issue is that they're just idiots setting these things up yeah. and then and then just dissolving slowly into nothing because they don't know how to scale it. And yeah, we can't do anything yeah. about that. Yeah, I mean, I I picked this story up um from your website and and. I think there's just an element of feel, feeling safer with projects mm -hmm. to fall back on. Like I'm totally screwed when I go shopping and I lose my receipt, but this is all on the blockchain, right? So I don't have to worry about a receipt. Um, I just think, you know, that's why it's, it's, it's important to know who founders are behind these projects. You really have to do like the, the MI5 on these brand new projects. And even if there isn't enough information out there for these new whatever projects that pick up i think knowing that you can get the mint price back from what i read there's just a, a bit of a, a better trust element to projects if that's available yeah there, yeah there are some there are some different ways to skin this particular cat i actually don't think you necessarily need to know who's behind a project but i think one of the key things is you need to know where the money went and what it, and what's happened to it and that's just treasury management and good treasury transparency that can all be done on chain pretty well. But I mean, most people have no clue. And why would they? It's, it's so new and so complicated, all of this stuff. Um, but again, there has to be an example that people can follow. And I think the more of these that come out and the more examples we get, um, the more folks we'll get, but also, you know, we'll, we'll arrive at something that kind of just about works, mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, everything is a compromise at the end of the day. Well, I think that's a good place to wrap it up. We've been NFT heavy this week, but I think it's just inevitable. NFTs are going to be this interface point, this how crypto meets the world. And I, there was another story that actually popped up this week. I will just briefly mention it, which is uh, a, a project called Near Protocol launched what is effectively a competing product to Terra's UST. Um, and Terra has this anchor protocol which is the headline product on the, the network where you can get a 20% fixed rate of interest on stable coins. And that is just like, for me, that's the defining 20%. protocol of DeFi. That is the thing that you, you can take to a person in the street and say, this is what's possible with your US dollars. And given the insane inflation at the moment, if you could say to them, you can, you can actually outrun inflation. It's not a lot, but you can do it here. That's a big selling point for this space. And the problem has been that it's been on one platform, which is Terra, and there's a lot of exogenous risk around UST because it's an algorithmic stablecoin. But I think if there are more of these scattered around, you could diversify and then you could potentially build baskets of mm. uh, these 20% fixed rate of interest products across different chains. And then you've got something that might have some stability and robustness that could be really powerful and, and really actually create a DeFi product that works for everyone. And that would be exciting. So I'm I'm really curious to see how that one's going to play out. But yeah, any last thoughts? Sorry. Any last thoughts, Cami? Yeah, I mean, I mean, just like briefly on on the anchor and, and now this uh, this near uh, project. Um, I think like the like the whole Terra anchor ecosystem, like Doe being so vocal about buying Bitcoin to like to um, add to reserves for UST, like that whole story has been so, so fascinating. For me, like it, it is like such a, an attractive uh, uh, point for, 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 for really anyone, you know, who wants to uh, get more return on their savings. Um, but I would just like add a note of, uh, of caution here that 
um, you know, this really does work as long as there's like money coming in, right? You, you need kind of the the, the backing of, of Luna behind this and like, you know, you, know, you need kind of demand to be there. Um, I'm just like, I wonder how things play out in a really kind of long protracted bear market where there's just like no, not enough demand uh, to stay in these like these rates. I mean, I guess like then at that time, like you just have to like cut rates uh, and, and that's pretty much it. But um, so just wanted to like add that note of caution that it's, you know, you, you need kind of demand to sustain that 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 uh, rate level. Um, but yeah, I think that's uh, th that's that's a good way uh, to leave it. I think yeah, very NFT heavy. Uh, it's been like such a volatile year for crypto, and for some reason, like NFT is just like at least like some projects like have been really holding up. Uh, I think surprisingly well. I made like rate increases, war in Ukraine, like all these headwinds for risky assets. Um, NFTs are really kind of proving their, their worth and that people really do value uh, these uh, communities and like th this uh, sense of belonging. So I think that's, that's pretty cool. Elaine, final thoughts? Yeah, NFTs in real life for me. Um, I, I'm not part of the Border Yacht Club, um, so I need to find something that speaks to me. So I'm looking forward towards maybe something mentioning um, World of Women, uh, their gala. I don't know what that is. Maybe the new festival. Um, who knows? That's something that I'm looking forward mm. to. And uh, I'm on the Anchorage Protocol website right now. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thanks, Elaine. Thanks, Kami. This is Real Vision versus Defiance. Weekly tiptoe across just NFT stuff. You might as well call <laughs> it the NFT show from now on. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll be with you at the same time sort of next week. See ya. <laughs> Bye. Bye.